Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Tonight, the question we are answering is, what's in the box in regards to World's Fair 1893 Second Edition from Renegade Game Studios? This is a new printing of World's Fair put out by Renegade Games to address the fact that the original game didn't have much diversity in it. So they put out a new deluxe edition that is going to include more women and people of color, which I think is an awesome initiative. This game is an Amazon exclusive, at least for the first year. I don't know if it always will be. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to crack this open and I'm going to show you what's in the box. All right, so here we have a brand new, just cut the shrink copy copy of World's Fair, 1893 second edition. So one of the things that's really nice here is they've got a gold embossed cover here. You can kind of see that reflecting. Then we get into the rule book, which I'm gonna flip through quickly. Lots of full color examples. Looks like single column layout, lots of white space, full turn examples, what you do on your turn. Nice sidebar here calling out important details. The scoring phase. And a little bit of a history on the background here. And on the back we do have a summary and, oh, not a summary. That's really cool. There's a map of the actual World's Fair and which exhibits were there. Uh, then we have a list of games. So these are all in the family games. So this is not a, not a sorry, this is considered one of their family games. Uh, this is other games by Renegade. Then we get to the punch boards. This is the fantastic wheel, which you replace here depending on the number of players. So the Ferris wheels have different amounts. Then we have each of the different things like agriculture, electricity. So the different displays that are on during the game. And you can tell how well cut this is because it's falling apart as I'm opening this, which honestly is a really good thing. Then you have manufacturing, which isn't gonna make it out of the box. Um, you have the scoring tokens for your prizes, first, second, third prizes. You've got some coins. Then we move on to the fine arts, which is already down in the bottom of the box. And then under fine arts will be one more. So get these out of the way. All right, so under fine arts, of course, is transportation. So just to kind of show one of these off quickly, just to show the details here, that we're cutting right through all the blues. There's too many blues on these. So a bunch of different tokens. You have tokens for each of the different exhibits. Thickness is decent. Not a lot to show off here. Here's one of the coins. Copper coin. Uh, what's nice to see is the coins are different sizes, so um, for anyone who has vision impairment, you can tell these apart by the width or the depth. Sorry, not the depth, the width, the diameter. Um, and there are golds. So here are the three different coins that are included in World's Fair 1893. Then we move on to a bag of bags. So one of the things I always love is when designers, you can't really see those on there, include a bag of baggies. Nice way to keep your game nice and organized. And then we have another bag of baggies, but each of these has cubes in them. Now these cubes have been specifically chosen to be colorblind friendly. Uh, you have a desiccant package, which if you live anywhere with high humidity, keep this in your box. It will stop your cardboard from warping. Uh, so we have white cubes and a shiny new piece, which is an etched white Tracker. So we're going to take these white cubes out. These are larger than most resource cubes. Like they're, they're a little little chunkier. You can kind of see compared to my hand there. I'm getting a little reflection. And then there is a printed building here for the white exhibit, which is two-sided. That's a nice upgrade. Then we move on to yellow cubes. Again, mainly all I care about is if there's a printed one. No, no nice printed thing for yellow. So I think that might be the round tracker. Uh, sadly, I haven't played World's Fair in a while. Yellow cubes, again, a little bigger than most uh, resource cubes in games. So this is a area majority game where you will be playing cubes to represent exhibits you placed in different areas, as well as playing cards on the outside edge of the board. Then we have purple cubes, 
which unfortunately my uh, my camera is filtering out blue. And then we have blue cubes. I probably should have set this to the green side. My bad. Then we have blue cubes and one little red cylinder. I'm not going to open that up because you're not going to be able to see them. So we have blue cubes and a red cylinder. Then we get to the cards. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to put all this back in here. And I'm going to move this out of the way. And then I'm going to crack open these cards. So here you have all the different cards that come in the game. So we start off, we have a summary that shows the actions you can take, as well as the start bonuses. So these start bonuses, you'll actually shuffle these, hand them out to the players, and the different players will have different start bonuses for player one, two, three, four, or whatever. Uh, then we have a summary of the scoring phase for what happens in the case of a tie and so on. Uh, it's a little different. So step two is for scoring areas. Step one is, it still says step two score. Oh, it's number players. So this is scoring for four players, three players, two players. So there we go, a bunch of different scoring phase. And then a scoring phase step-by-step -step that actually goes you through every single phase. So what you do to score each area, uh, looks like it's just two-sided. One copy of that. But the second part, there's multiple copies. And then we get into the cards. So there are a lot of cards here. i got to say I'm impressed. I like that card back. That's nice. And what we're going to have is a bunch of different things. Uh, that's a lot of blue. So we're going to skip through. We have the midway tickets, which unfortunately are blue on blue. So we have those. They all say admit one, and then they have one of the various exhibits that was on during the show, like the Chinese theater, or a diving show, or the Egyptian temple, or the Ferris wheel, and so on. There is a stack of those. Then we have the various exhibits from the different types. So we have agricultural exhibits. We have a whole bunch of these. These I should be able to put under the thing. So example of agricultural machinery card. Which gives you a little background on the back, on the bottom of it. Then we have agricultural grain. Brazilian coffee. And so on. So we're going to pull the rest of the agriculture over here. Put them in a stack and then move on. I'm not going to show you a ton of these, but then we're going to look at electricity. So we have AC, alternating current. You've got the Atlantic Cable. 27 foot long model demonstrated telegraphic communication between New York and England and so on. That's the electrical ones. Then we have the fine arts which include the Japanese screen, Japanese vases, the modern woman, the prodigal son and so on. Then we get into manufacturing with the clock tower. A lot of blue on these cards. I apologize. Here's one with less blue. Hans Christian Andersen. And so on. Finally, we get into the final type of cards, which are transportation with the Daimler quadricycle. And gondolas, which are, again, mostly blue. Finally, we get into the inventors cards. These all break the rules in certain ways. So we've got Augustus St. God's, Godden's, two of him. So there's two of each one. We have Bertha Palmer. We have Irving Grand Penn. Oh, only one. So I don't know why some have two, some there are one. We have Susan B. Anthony. Charles H. Schwab, two of him, Cyrus McCormick, oh sorry, Cyrus McCormick Jr., they're both Jr., Daniel Burnham, Frederick Douglass, Henry Ives Cobb, Ira B. Wells, Ida, my bad, Ida B. Wells, George Davis, Fanny Barrier Williams, Frederick Law Olmsted, 
George Pullman, and George Westinghouse. And that's it. That is everything you get in the new second printing of World's Fair 1893. I'm going to pack this up really quickly, and I'm going to hate myself later when all these cards are loose in the box. But... World's Fair, 1893. There you have what's in the box for World's Fair, 1893. This is the second edition of World's Fair, uh, recently put out by Renegade Games, available as an Amazon exclusive, at least at first. Um, Got to say, everything looks nice, everything looks pretty. I honestly thought this was more of a deluxe edition. Instead, it's more of a second print. I, I was expecting some deluxe fight components. That's just me misunderstanding exactly what this product was. So what they've done is they've done some updates to the characters that are present. The characters, the people, the historic figures. There we go. They have done some updates to the historic figures to make it more inclusive, which I greatly appreciate. Good move on that, Renegade Games. I'm slightly disappointed. It's not like a really cool deluxe edition, but you know what? It's a great game. It's always been a good game, and I do appreciate modernizing it. So thank you for that, Renegade. Uh, so that's it for me. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge. You can find me all over the internet as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Be sure to check out TabletopBellhop.com for more awesome gaming content. And if you like what you see there and on this video, please consider tipping your bellhop by heading to Patreon.com slash TabletopBellhop. That's it for me. Good night and game on.